I don't know whether you folks know, but I'm sure you do, that up in the air above this earth, some 360 miles, is a telescope. It's called the Hubble Telescope. And it studies the sky from the vantage point of being above the distortions of the atmosphere. It's clear up there. Now what happened just two years ago, the Hubble telescope found a spot out in the sky that had absolutely nothing in it. It was blank. Now that spot compared to the whole of the sky was equal to the size of a dime, a coin, 250 feet away, clear out the field out here. It was just that big, that large, a small a portion of the sky. <clears throat> now they exposed on that portion of the sky uh, a, a photographic plate for ten whole days. And then they developed that plate. Do you know what they found? That that spot which to the, the normal human eye contained absolutely nothing. And it had 50 billion galaxies in that spot. Not stars, whole galaxies. We live in a galaxy called the sidereal universe, which is like a flat, like a platter. And they discovered, and they wrote it up in the New York Times. Let me read what it said in the New York Times. Suddenly, the universe gains 40 billion more galaxies. Not stars, galaxies. 50 billion instead of 10 billion. Now it seems safe to say that there are 50 billion times a hundred billion galaxies. I can't understand that. But with my spirit, with my mind, I'm trying to conceive of the God that loves me and loves you. That he is so great that he made all of this at his word. He spoke and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. And I say, My Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder behold the worlds thy hand hath made. I'm trying to understand God with my spirit. How great he is. Now, let's look at God through a microscope, please. Watch this. Right here on the edge of this pulpit, there's a speck of dust. It's so small that I can't even see it. That speck of dust right there is our world. Our world. It's right there. Now, if I could take a microscope and examine that speck of dust, there would be on that speck of dust, there would be some microbes crawling. And I look and I said, there's some microbes. There are microbes crawling on that speck of dust. And I focus down a little farther, and I see a microbe on that speck of dust. And that microbe's name is Mary, the Virgin. And I look down a little further, and I look at this microbe called Mary, the Virgin. And I look inside of her. And inside her ovary is an egg.
And into that egg comes a divine spark. Not from man, but from God. And she brings forth a microbe. And that microbe's name is Jesus. Can you think of that? Do you know what, folk? I'm trying to understand God with a telescope, and then I try to understand God with a microscope, and I can't believe it. It, 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 it just absolutely boggles my mind that God, who created a billion times a billion galaxies, that he came down and became a microbe because he loves you and he loves me. He became a microbe. Now I begun to say John 3.16, my brother, sister, with a new vision. Because I'm understanding God with my spirit. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. That whoever believes on him. How could God give us anything more? He came down as small as it's possible to become to the size of a male sperm. I can't understand that with my spirit. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now I'm beginning to understand how we're going to study the plan of salvation for all of eternity. I'll never understand that. How could God do this? Now listen to this. I'm going to appeal to your hearts now. Listen. How can you rebel? How can you? How can you rebel? How can you deny God anything after what he did when he came down to be a microbe on a speck of dust? How can you deny him anything in your life? How can I? After what he did. His claim upon everybody in this room is absolutely total. 